Morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police are investigating a fatal crash that has part of North Loop 1604 West shut down this morning. The details just ahead here on GMSA. Plus, we're talking about the most recent crime trend specific targets and what comes next. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar will be joining us with the answers live in today's leading essay segment. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, yesterday was a whirlwind of weather. We had sunshine, we had rain. So what does today look like? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Justin Horn in just a few moments. But until then, good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, May 16th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. I got to say, I beat you by work, what, about five minutes, five, seven minutes? I don't know. You beat me, so. It was, it was dry when I got here, and, and then you come in I here. I got an intense little short shower. I, you know, <laughs> I... I I started my drive. It was okay. Mm -hmm. By the time I had to get out, I had to cover oh, yeah. up, you were the, all bundled up. Cover up like, the hair and I'm makeup. Okay. But you know, Justin, um, it was a bit, it was a bunch of different things that happened yesterday. And mm -hmm. I got about, I have a rain gauge at my house. Yep. Almost an inch of rain. Wow. That's that's a good amount. You know, the, there were some varied amounts yesterday with some of the showers and storms that came through. We're going to see a similar setup today. It's a hit or miss type thing, but we did get some rain this morning here in San Antonio, and we've got some heavier downpours now to the south and east of town. I think here in town we're going to get a break for a while, so if you have plans to be out, know that the roads are wet, but we're probably not going to see any downpours, at least for a while. The heavier storms now south of town, south of Pleasanton, and there you can see San Antonio doing just fine. It's still some light rain there on the far east side of Bear County. Now, if you're in Carn City, it's loud right now. Showers and storms, nothing severe, but you are going to get some good rain along uh, Highway 181 there, and that's going to continue to move east southeast. Another nice looking cell just north of Fowlerton, moving towards Tilden. That's slowly working its way south and east, and this one's going to dump quite a bit of rain. So there could be some street flooding in those areas. And then back off towards the west, light rain in Del Rio. Storms out in Mexico, but so far they are staying there. And uh, temperature-wise, right around 70 degrees here in town. Lots of clouds, obviously. 68 Bernie Stage, 68 out in Tarpley, and uh, 73 right now in Katua. Forecast for today, we're going to keep some rain chances in there, although I think the best chance will be east of I-35, about a 40% shot. Temperatures, low 80s. And we're looking for more rain down the line. Some storms, especially on Tuesday. We'll detail that forecast here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Something we've been covering throughout the morning. The city's north side, there was a crash. All lanes north 1604 Loop West at Blanco had to be shut down for several hours. Authorities responding to a deadly crash. Alicia Benetta has been at the scene all morning long. She joins us live now. Alicia, do you have any updates from police? Well, authorities managed to clean up the scene in less than three hours, but the investigation is far from over. Really, it's only beginning. We still are waiting on official confirmation of what happened, but here's what we saw when we've been here uh, throughout the morning. Earlier, we had mentioned that two vehicles were involved. However, the sedan that was here earlier drove off about an hour or so ago, signaling it may have not been directly linked to the fatal accident. It's the white truck that had a lot of damage to the front end, but it's unclear what led to the crash. Here at the scene, we saw the body of the victim just a couple of feet in front of that white truck. That white truck has been towed away. Investigators continued with taking measurements throughout the morning and of course surveying the area for any evidence that will help them piece this scene together. During our time here, no driver was in sight, and at this hour, still no information on who that fatal victim is. All we know is that one person died here on the scene early this morning and was transported to the medical examiner's, just, uh, medical examiner's office just a few moments ago. The scene is now clear. The highway is open once again. Again, it was closed off for about three hours, but investigators here at the scene have done their job, so drivers are able to make their way through. Max Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. Well, a man was also hit by a car early this morning in the 8500 block of South Presa Street around 1.40 a.m. Police tell us the man and his girlfriend were arguing at a bar. That's when he left. Officers say the woman and several of her friends got into a car to look for the man. Police say at some point the driver lost control of the vehicle and the passenger grabbed the wheel. The car then ran into the man and a guardrail. The man was taken to a hospital and is in critical condition. The driver was arrested and is facing intoxication assault charges.
San Antonio police asking for your help trying to find a suspect responsible for the death of 31 year old Gary Smith. So take a look. The incident happened back on May 5th at the Oak Manor Apartments on Austin Highway. Police tell us Smith was sitting in his parked vehicle when a Nissan Ultima pulled up behind him. That's when someone inside the Nissan started firing several gunshots, killing Smith. Anyone with any information is urged to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. You could be eligible for a reward of up to $5,000. Well, members of an east side church community gathered this weekend to say guns have no place on their streets. The advocacy group Moms Demand Action joined forces with the Stop in the Name of Love movement for a rally at the Greater Faith Institutional Church. Their goal to promote gun safety awareness. The Stop in the Name of Love movement actually formed as an effort to end gun violence in response to a February 7th shooting that happened at that exact church. Gun violence has become a part of our daily lives and we need to work together to find the best solutions to prevent that and to make San Antonio safer. San Antonio Police Chief William McMahon McManus also attended the rally saying, although violent crimes have taken a dip, the dangers associated with gun violence are still very much a threat to everyone. He says there needs to be a combined effort between communities and law enforcement to keep violent crimes on the low. And speaking of crimes in our area, every Sunday we have our Leading Essay segment. We speak to leaders of our community about some of the most timely issues impacting families in our area. Joining us in today's Leading Essay segment is Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar. Good morning, Sheriff. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me on. What are some of the most recent crime trends that you guys are seeing? Well, we're actually seeing a slight up uptick in violent crimes out in unincorporated Bear County. But we're, we're uh, combating it in some, some new and innovative ways, uh, very much intelligence-led policing. But we're reorganizing around organized crime, and we brought back our uniform gang unit. Well, Sheriff, in terms of BCSO, y'all have appeared very transparent about the arrest of deputies. So what is your message to the community when they see members of your team getting into trouble with the law? Well, and, and I remind my deputies that really all that's being asked of us of society is just be better at your job, be transparent with your job and hold each other accountable, hold yourselves accountable. And, and definitely they demand of me to hold my people accountable. That's what we've been doing all along. And so what's being asked of us now is nothing new. Uh, and so, you know, I'm, I'm very, very proud to, to lead the charge uh, in that effort. Now, there is a bill making its way through the Texas legislature that would allow permitless carry. It's facing an obstacle in the Texas House, but... And if it stays, uh, if it continues to go through, uh, have you guys been staying on top of it, you know, looking at what that means for you? And if so, what are some of the challenges that that would pose? Well, I mean, yes, I've got a legislative liaison uh, deputy that, that oversees those sorts of things. He's tracking that bill uh, with a lot of interest. You know, I just can't see the reasoning behind wanting more guns on the street, especially when they're in the hands of unlicensed folks untrained folks and unidentified folks. We just don't know who's going to be carrying a gun out there. Uh, and, and that presents a lot of problems for law enforcement. And Sheriff, are there any specific crimes your office is trying to crack down and focusing on? And if so, what should people be watching out for? Yes, we're, we're really concentrating our efforts on organized crime, trying to stop the folks that are benefiting from this crime being out there. So we're asking people to watch out for drug activity, human trafficking type activity, uh, illegal gambling operations. And we're asking them to call our organized crime group at 210-335-GANG, 210-335-GANG, and uh, let us know about it. You can remain anonymous and you can call in on any location anywhere in the county, even if it's in one of the incorporated areas we're going to target it. Fantastic. Now, this weekend, Peace Officers Memorial Day. So do you have any special words to honor those who have served our community? Just uh, thank you for your service, uh, whether you're military or a first responder. Uh, thank you for your continued service. And we want the public to know that we very much appreciate the support that we first responders uh, have here with our community. We've got a very unique uh, connection, which when, when other people, other first responders from other parts of the country come here, they make note of the fact that it's a very, uh, very interesting and very supportive relationship. And so just thank the community for their continued support of us. Well, Sheriff, thank you so much for taking your time to join us this morning. And our viewers, they can watch this full interview on KSAT.com later this morning. Thank you, Sheriff. Bye-bye.
Time now is just about 810, 71 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, a local cafe is filling more than customers' bellies. We'll show you how the heartfelt note someone left behind for employees at Comfort Cafe. Plus, an Air Force pilot and his daughter guiding him in to his last ride. We're going to give you a look at a special moment that he shared with his family. And getting into the fiesta spirit from the comfort of your own home, we'll tell you how to enter the first ever porch parade contest. Whoa, you got a head start. I did. The rain, though, melting mm. those decorations. <laughs> We're going to check in with Justin Horn for your full forecast in just a bit. Well, since there will not be a Battle of Flowers parade and Fiesta Flambeau parade this year, San Antonio is having a porch parade. That's right. So it is a virtual event, citywide decorating competition for homes, schools, even businesses. It started April 23rd, but you have until May 24th to get involved. Right now on KSAT.com, you can submit pictures of your decorations. You can win prizes and, of course, Fiesta bragging rights. We're going to announce seven winners on Friday, June 18th all during KSAT's Fiesta Special. I want to see pictures of the porch you've decorated. Okay, it's it's very simple. <laughs> it's a homemade wreath that I made and okay. just, you know some regular uh, banners, but I was really concerned, Justin, because about putting like certain like piñatas or any paper materials out because they'll just be washed away. I mean, that's that's a fair concern. <laughs> you know, I, I, your porch is still intact though, right? I yeah, mean, my porch is still intact. <laughs> Still doing okay. Yeah, the, the rain was a little heavy this morning, so you may have to move some of those decorations inside. It's going to be a fairly wet week, I'll warn you there, as we go forward in time. But here's the situation right now. Showers and storms pushing south and east of San Antonio. The threat is over here in town. The rain, for the most part, is over, but we still have wet conditions, damp conditions out there. If you're heading out the door for church this morning, everything looks just fine. You may not even need the umbrella. Uh, but if you're watching us from Gonzales, or down towards Fowlerton. That's where the rain is pretty heavy, right along I-37 between Pleasanton and down towards Corpus Christi. A little closer look here at uh, Seguin. Still some light rain holding on, but that's starting to move away. And then Floresville, same story. A little heavier rain, though. Carn City, in fact, quite a bit of lightning. That's electrical, so it's going to be pretty loud there. This activity is slowly moving north or south and east, I should say, dropping heavy rain along the way. And then there's that other cell, Fowlerton over to Tilden. That's where there is a good cluster of lightning strikes here. That tells us there's some very heavy rain there. Also moving off to the south and east. And checking in on Del Rio, just some light rain at the moment. What's uh, left over from a storm out there in Mexico bringing some light rain there into parts of Del Rio, but that should be winding down fairly soon. And it looks like we may get a little bit of a break in the action. The atmosphere gets a little worked over this morning. And then as we get into the afternoon, there could be some more showers and storms, mainly east of San Antonio, I think, today. Showers ending right now. Cloudy skies out there, a few peaks of sun. And then storms east of I-35 this afternoon, as we mentioned. And then we'll be watching for some severe weather tomorrow, but more so on Tuesday. The threat is there. Temperatures right now, 71 east south east chilly winds at about 8 miles per hour. 71 Holotus, 71 Randolph, 72 in New Braunfels, some 60s up in the hill country, 68 right now in Bandera, 70 Creso Springs, 72 with some light rain out in Del Rio. Here's the big picture, and we've got a piece of energy coming across the state, and that's helping to kick off some of these showers and storms this morning. With that energy still there, I, I think that we could get a, a little bit more activity this afternoon, and we can see that on water vapor. Still some moisture to play with. Behind this, there's a bigger system out over California. Now, this is going to be moving in on Tuesday, and this is what I think is going to help to kick off some severe weather Tuesday afternoon. Forecast looks like this. Uh, 4 o'clock still shows some showers and storms east of I-35. Also watch for a couple storms developing out in Mexico. Some of those could get close to Del Rio Eagle Pass this evening. Uh, and then as we get into tomorrow, this model doesn't show much. But if we were to get a storm tomorrow, it likely would go severe. The setup is there for that. So we'll keep a close eye on the radar. Don't think we'll see a whole lot, about a 20% chance. But as we get into Tuesday, we get some upper level energy moving in. And this is where I think we can see some pretty strong storms. We'll be on the tail end of things. But if we are to get some storms on Tuesday, they'll likely be strong to severe. So that's something we want to watch. 
In addition, we're going to have to look out for heavy rain too. a lot of rain with these storms. This is the rainfall potential over the next seven days. It does show three to five inches in some cases. Not everybody's going to see that much, but if we do see that even in pockets, it's going to cause some flash flooding. So that will be something that uh, we'll keep a close eye on. 40% chance of storms today, mainly east of I-35. Temperatures will be right around 81 degrees here in San Antonio. 88 tomorrow, 86 on Tuesday with a 70% chance of storms. Looks like we'll keep that going on Wednesday too. And maybe tapering off a little bit Thursday, but picking back up Friday, Saturday. So there is still not a day in our seven day forecast in which we do not have rain chances, guys. Jeez. All right. Very active forecast. Thank you, Justin Horn. 818, 71 degrees out. Well, still ahead, a celebrity auction benefiting impoverished children continues today. Details on the Janet Jackson items that are up for bid. And after the break, an Air Force pilot getting an unexpected surprise during the last flight of his military career. What he has to say about the heartwarming moment. Take a look at some of these lotto numbers. Pick three, one, zero, four, fireball seven, daily four, four, eight, two, three, fireball three. And your cash five, three, seven, 10, 1932, lotto Texas, eight, 15, 23, 24, 42, 44. Powerball 4, 10, 37, 39, 69. Powerball 24, power play 3. Did you win? No. Okay. Well, someone might have. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. We have a couple things that will warm you. Warm you up on the Sunday mornings, rainy Sunday morning for some people. Well, first up, Lieutenant Colonel John Dameron of South Carolina. The 20 year force pi Air Force pilot and father of three children was ready to take his final military flight before retiring this week. So he boarded the plane, but to his surprise, the person directing him in was his eight year old daughter, <laughs> Gabrielle. She carefully guided him in in his C-17 cargo plane with Captain Aaron Autobelli by her side. I was so glad my family and friends were able to be there and share it with me. So after dad came off that plane for the last time at Joint Base Charleston, his son Seth and Sullivan welcomed him home with an Air Force tradition being sprayed down by water hoses. So we want to wish John a happy and healthy retirement. Well, back here at home, the Comfort Cafe on Bandera near Northwest Loop 410 is providing comfort to some of those in our community. In more ways than one, really an amazing story. It's on KSAT.com. If you haven't seen it yet, was reading it this morning, shared a note that workers received from a customer who was more than grateful for their service. The customer seemed to be going through a rough time, going through a hardship based on the context of the note, but said the cafe's food and welcoming environment left them in higher spirits. The note reads as follows. Thank you all for what you do for us, the crippled and the broken. Today was an extremely hard day for me. Got bad news last night. As soon as I showed up, Matt welcomed us and the weight slash black cloud was lifted. Love radiates in this place and our community is infinitely better with you in it. My heart and belly is full. The cafe says this is just what they do to remind us we are all one in what seems like a divided world world and that is so amazing i was reading the note on kset.com it's re i know it's really good because <laughs> look over max at his desk <laughs> well because you know there are so many times that are hard and it is really important to see community come together in those hard it's times it's good to read good news stories absolutely yeah. all right 825 71 degrees out well the tiger that disappeared in houston last week has finally been captured still ahead in our next half hour a look at new video of the animal and details on what comes next for it Plus the latest involving COVID and the mask guidance. The CDC making big news this week. So what Americans who are fully vaccinated now need to know. We're going to explain next. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Acosta. It's May 16th. Yesterday we celebrated Max's birthday here on the show. Happy Birthday again. To yeah, I you. appreciate you not saying the number. Yeah, it's good. We won't I will say, it. <laughs> say, yesterday there was a lot of jokes. Oh, happy 21st birthday. People at home took that seriously <laughs> and reached out don't to me on, social, yourself, on social media and being like, are you really only 21? We don't need to get no, into that. No. He's not, but that's fine. <laughs> Apparently, he also talks about himself in the third person. Either way, yesterday, rainy and some sunshine. Justin, what can we expect today? Oh, man. I uh, hope you had a good birthday, Max. Bye. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, a little bit of rain yesterday. We picked up some good numbers southwest of San Antonio. Seeing some more heavy rain now. In fact, we just now have a flash flood advisory coming out for Carnes County. Here's why. See that cluster of storms there moving to the south and east of San Antonio. That is where some heavy rain is falling this morning. A lot of lightning strikes with this too, so we know this is good heavy rain. Thankfully, no severe weather, but this will continue to work off to the south and east. Places like Beeville, you're going to get in on the rain probably within the next hour or so. Here in San Antonio, the rain is done, so if you're heading out the door now, you're, you'll be just fine. There's still some wet roads out there, still a little bit damp in spots, but the rain generally moving out. Uh, still a few maybe very light showers down around Elmendorf, uh, but the heavy stuff is now stretching from Carn City, Campbellton, Three Rivers over to Tilden, and that's where you could pick up a quick inch of rain out of this. I wouldn't be surprised. Temperature wise, we're in the 70s right now. 71 Randolph, 71 at the airport, 72 in New Braunfels. Still a lot of cloud cover in place at the moment. 60s up around Rock Springs. That's a cool spot. Rain chances this week, about a 40% chance today, mainly off to the east of San Antonio. Lower chance tomorrow, but Tuesday, 70% chance, 60% chance on Wednesday, and more chances as we finish out the week and go into next weekend. For today, 40% chance. Uh, 81, your high temperature, southeast Julie winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll talk more about what we're expecting early next week coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Well, now to the mounting confusion across the country following the CDC's new guidance that people who are fully vaccinated can ditch the mask, well, in most settings. At least 19 states now changing their mask mandates. ABC's Trevor Alt has the details. Celebration. Everybody's been waiting for this moment for a while now. And confusion. Should I take my mask off? Should I leave it on? It's super confusing. In the wake of the CDC's new guidance allowing fully vaccinated people to ditch the masks outdoors and indoors in almost every situation. We've all been in this lockdown for so long. Um, it still feels like a shock to transition to a new, a new normal. Many Americans feeling whiplash from rapid fire changes. At least 19 of the 24 states that had mask mandates now announcing plans to adopt the CDC guidance or scrap mask requirements entirely. And major chains like Walmart, Costco and Trader Joe's making masks optional for fully vaccinated shoppers. They're jumping the gun for sure. I mean, last week they tell you everybody must wear a mask and now two days later they're saying take off your mask. I don't trust any of it. Starbucks said it was keeping its full mask requirement. Now, just 24 hours later, they'll let fully vaccinated customers choose. But nearly two thirds of the country is not yet fully vaccinated. And businesses and the essential workers running them will be largely relying on an honor system. We didn't want to be the mask police. Uh, in the early portions of this pandemic, and we certainly don't want to be the vaccination police uh, at the end of it. And with kids under 12 still not eligible for the shots, parents like Fatima and Nicholas Diaz are taking extra precautions. If I'm going into a store, I'm wearing a mask. If I get out of my car, I'm wearing a mask. Is that for your own safety or is that to set an example for your son? Both. At a park picnic for Fatima's birthday, the parents weren't wearing masks, but three-year-old Caden was. Why do you wear your mask? Because we have to be safe. You have to be safe? Mm -hmm. And the CDC director is calling these mask guidance changes the first step. And the agency will be using it as a framework as they re-examine their guidance in other areas for things like schools, daycare, summer camps, and even broader things like travel. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Well, here in the Alamo City, you will no longer be required to wear a mask if you visit SeaWorld or Aquatica. That is, if you are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. The changes come after the CDC eased its mask wearing guidelines. Park officials say the parks won't require proof of vaccination, but they are asking guests respectfully to comply with the new policy. Meantime, all park employees will be required to wear face masks. If you are not fully vaccinated, you will still need to wear a face mask went out in public and continue to socially distance. And speaking of proof, what happens if you lose your COVID vaccine card? A lot of questions a lot of people are asking. So right now on KSAT.com, we have an article that breaks down what you need to know if you lose the card and what you need to do. I mean, should you laminate it? Should you not? Just click on the link. There's a great story under the vaccine section. Well, meanwhile, the demand for blood continues to be high in San Antonio. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is especially in need of type O blood. 
A blood drive will be hosted Tuesday, May 25th from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Lifetime Fitness on Worth Parkway. It's in honor of Reggie Campbell, a husband and father who was a personal trainer and photographer. Reggie passed away on May 15th last year after battling leukemia. Donors can schedule a blood donation by calling that number on your screen you see there, 210-731-5590 or visiting SouthTexasBlood.org. In your morning headlines, a major train crash yesterday afternoon near Minneapolis. Union Pacific says 28 cars derailed next to Goose Lake. Two of the derailed cars are leaking hydrochloric acid, which can, can be toxic and cause severe chemical burns. A hazmat crew brought in just as precaution. Now, those living near the accident site are advised to remain indoors. So far, there have been no reports of any injuries. This is all according to the rail operator. The cause of the derailment still being investigated. Well, the operator of the nation's largest gas line pipeline that was hit with a cyber attack says it has resumed normal operations. The Georgia-based Colonial Pipeline began the process of restarting the pipeline's operations on Wednesday evening. The company warned it could take several days for the supply chain to return to normal. And back here in Texas, the nine-month-old tiger that disappeared in Houston for nearly a week has been found and is safe. The big cat named India being held at the city's animal shelter. Authorities say it appears unharmed. Now, remember, police released video of the animal yesterday shortly after it was located. The tiger's owner, also seen in that video, notified the shelter that she wanted to turn it in. The tiger will be relocated to a wildlife sanctuary later today. And you may need to adjust your commute if you're out and about in the Alamo City today. Several parts of Stone Oak Parkway closed for asphalt paving, according to TxDOT. You can find the full list of this weekend's traffic closures by TxDOT right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, the first annual Southside Book Fair kicks off today. It runs from 11 this morning until 3 this afternoon. It will showcase up to 20 award-winning authors from the Southside and throughout Texas. The authors will also be autographing and selling their books if you're interested in attending. The Book Fair will be hosted by Brewster's Backyard Ice House. It's located on 815 Pleasanton Road. All right, time now is 837, 71 degrees out. Well, Tim Duncan was inducted into the Hall of Fame last night. Yes, it was such an emotional moment for the entire class of 2020. Obviously, Tim Duncan's Hall of Fame. It has been decades in the making, and we saw some very familiar faces. I also have an inkling this is not going to be the last of that Spurs dynasty that we're going to see enter the Hall. We're going to hear from Tim Duncan and give you some highlights from the Suns game. Well, boy, it should have been a game from yesterday. It was a blowout. Surprise. Oh, <laughs> All right. Well, Chrissy Teigen, she's apologizing for harassing another celebrity oh. online. What she is now saying about her actions. And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. 71 degrees to start your Sunday morning. We had some wishy-washy rain yesterday, some sunshine, too. So what is the rest of the day? What does the week look like? We're going to check in with Justin Horn in just a bit. Versus Cheney, the battle for the GOP. Sunday, Liz Cheney, one on one. Which side will win? Plus, vaccinated Americans tossing the mask. But key questions remain. The director of the CDC and the Powerhouse Roundtable on ABC's This Week. All right, got some pop news for you. Chrissy Teigen has apologized for harassing a then teenage Courtney Stoden online. Years ago, the model says, quote, not a lot of people are lucky enough to be held accountable for all their past. And I'm mortified and sad at who I used to be. I was insecure, attention seeking troll, end quote. Stoden says Teigen's harassment and that of many others came as she faced intense Media criticism at the age of 16 for marrying 51-year-old Dutch Hutchinson in 2011. Janet Jackson's ensemble she wore in the Scream music video are among the items up for bid in a three-day auction. Her black circular bubble-textured fabric long sleeve shirt, black patent leather pants, and black patent leather over-the-ankle boots sold for $125,000 yesterday. The auction called Iconic Treasures from the Legendary Career and Life of Janet Jackson will continue today the singer's 55th birthday. A portion of the proceeds will go towards the an organization that helps children escape from poverty. And some of the best TV shows in history wouldn't have been the same without the presence of great neighbors that helped make the main characters more complete. But who have been the best neighbors of all time on TV? Mm. 
Well, head to ksat.com right now. We have a list of our 10 favorites like Steve Urkel from Family Matters, Wilnona Woods in Good Times, and Kramer from Seinfeld. We also <laughs> added Wilson in there from Home Improvement. <laughs> Be sure to comment at the bottom who your favorite TV neighbor is. All right, Coach Pop up in Springfield, Massachusetts last night for Tim Duncan's enshrinement into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Four starters for the Spurs are resting, so, you know, take that with you, Will. Spurs 140 to 103. Loss to the Suns yesterday afternoon did not mean a lot for them in the long run. Already locked into the 10th seed in this year's play-in tournament. The only question is, who will they play? Will it be Golden State or will it be Memphis? Both of those teams playing today, and San Antonio will play the loser of that matchup in a win-or-go-home game set for Wednesday. The Spurs need to win two games in the play-in tournament to qualify for the playoffs. So how does the team feel about the challenge? We got two days off before we play, which is uh, interesting. We haven't had that in a while. Uh, but, um, I mean, I'm looking forward to playing whoever we we can play, uh, you know, if it was any year before this, we wouldn't be playing on Wednesday. So I look, I look forward to the challenge. I like it. Winner take all. We've got no pressure going into it. Um, I feel like anybody we play has um, more to lose than we do. And we got guys that are resting right now. So they'll be fully charged, uh, ready to go on Wednesday. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, this is the moment we've been waiting for for decades. It is official Spurs legend Tim Duncan, a Hall of Famer. The latest from a franchise that has inducted the likes of David Robinson, George Gervin, and now Tim Duncan. Five-time NBA champion, two-time league MVP, a memorable career at the center of this Spurs dynasty, retiring as arguably, I'll argue against anyone with this, the greatest power forward to ever play the game. Now his legacy enshrined forever in the Basketball Hall of Fame, along with the rest of 2020. The first people Timmy thanked in his speech, his parents. William and I own Duncan, um, a combined zero basketball knowledge. <laughs> but they taught me more about the game than anyone else. Um, you heard the mantra that my mom instilled in me, good, better, best, never let it rest till you're good is better and you're better is your best. They told me and made me uh, have pride in everything I did, be the best at everything I did, be happy with what your role is or where, where you are and try to be the best at that. And I'm here because of them. Now Duncan spread the love to his teammates throughout the speech, including the Admiral David Robinson. David actually presenting Duncan for enshrinement, but Duncan made special note of the dynamic duo you see right there on your screen. There we go, Manu and Tony sit in front row watching their buddy get inducted, and I imagine that we're going to be seeing them on the big stage in the coming years as well. So back to our Spurs right now. They have one more regular season le game left. That is today, 1 p.m. this afternoon. It was a really emotional night for everyone. I mean, you had Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett, along with everyone else on that stage, and of course, Tim Duncan in that phenomenal speech. Ah, uh, so emotional. <laughs> Justin Orr, did you cry? A little bit. Uh, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> I, and I love Tim Duncan so much. Of course. Oh, so cool. Anyway, uh, let's talk a little bit about weather now. We've got some showers and storms pushing their way towards the Texas coast. This is some of our heavier rain that is uh, moving towards Beeville now. We're also got a good downpour taking place out in Howitzville. If you're watching us from out in Lavaca County, you're getting a good dose of rain this morning too. Here in San Antonio, the rain is clearing out. We still have some wet roads, but for the most part, the rain is ending. And I think we see a break in the action. The atmosphere is a little worked over, but as we get towards the afternoon, we'll probably see some more showers and storms develop. There's a look at how it's filled. That rain coming down along Highway 77 there, that's pushing north. Uh, no lightning strikes detected with that, but some good downpours for sure. The heaviest of the rain stretches from Tilden, just north of Three Rivers towards Carn City, or just south of Carn City, and then uh, back into eastern parts of Carnes County. And this is slowly making its way south and east, but it's dropping a lot of heavy rain as it does. So there are some flood advisories mixed in there. You could pick up a quick inch of rain, if not more, and that could cause some flooding in spots. Uh, the rain around Del Rio basically winding down now. Again, I think things quiet down out to the west, too. Here's some of the 24-hour rainfall estimates. We got some big numbers yesterday. Southern Medina County, even western parts of Bear County, up to two inches. And then some of those bigger numbers this morning with those showers and storms. 
uh, adding on to what we saw yesterday, now showing around five inches estimated by the radar. So this is good rain, but we've got to watch out for the threat of some flooding. Here's a look at the time lapse, and we saw some of those showers and storms move through San Antonio this morning. Some lightning strikes, some thunder may have woken you up. 71 degrees right now. East southeast Julie winds at about eight miles per hour, and obviously the dew point is fairly high. 68 in Bandera, 69 Tarpley, but 70s elsewhere. 71 at Randolph, 72 in New Braunfels, 72 on Del Rio, 73 Catula, and 72 with rain coming down in Kennedy and dew points. There's a ton of moisture out there. We'll have no lack of moisture going forward, and so we'll see some more showers and storms in the forecast. A little piece of energy coming through Texas. And we can see it there on the visible satellite picture that will continue to push east today. That may help to kick off some more storms east of San Antonio this afternoon. So there's the first little disturbance. Uh, we've got another bigger one back off towards the west, and that's going to be pushing in on Tuesday. And that brings the concern for some severe weather as we get that upper level support. Uh, we could see some bigger storms uh, start to kick off out in West Texas and then work their way towards our direction. Let's first start with today, though, and this model does show by 4 o'clock showers and storms developing generally east of I-35. Uh, and then as we get into tomorrow, some mostly cloudy skies and then maybe some sun tomorrow afternoon. This model does not show much in the way of rain, but if we were to get a storm tomorrow, it could quickly become severe. So we'll still watch it closely. We put in a 20% chance of rain on Monday. Tuesday, here comes the better shot at storms, especially during the afternoon. We could see some strong to severe storms. Now, we will be on the tail end of things, I think, but uh, we still very well may be in the line of fire. So we're going to keep a close eye on Tuesday afternoon, too. On top of the severe threat, there is a threat for some heavy rain. Rainfall potential over the next seven days shows some big numbers, three to five inches in some cases. Not everybody will see that much, but uh, we have to watch that too. 81 degrees today, 40% chance of rain. Again, mainly east of I-35, and then we'll go 88 tomorrow, 20% chance of rain, 70% chance Tuesday, 60% chance Wednesday, and rain chances even continue into next weekend, guys. It's gonna be one of those weeks where you just know there's gonna be constant like trickle of mud and puddles when you walk in to keep a towel and your umbrella right by the doorway. Thank you, Justin. 850, 71 degrees out. Well, do you or someone you love still have questions about getting the COVID-19 vaccine? Tomorrow on GMSA, what a mental health advocate discovered that helped her overcome her fears. And before we head to break, want to wish Hannah Ross a very happy birthday. 102 years young. Remember, you can post your birthday pictures, ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age, and you can see yours right here on GMSA. A fatal crash forces authorities to shut down all lanes at Blanco and North Loop 1604 West early this morning. Here at the scene, we saw the body of the victim just a couple of feet in front of a white truck. The white truck had a lot of damage to the front end, but it's unclear exactly what led to the crash. The white truck has since been towed away. Investigators continued with taking measurements and surveying the area for any evidence that will help them piece this scene together. During our time here this morning, no driver was in sight and at this hour, still no information on who that fatal victim is. All we know is that one person died here on the scene and was transported to the medical examiner's office earlier this morning. As of right now, the scene has been cleared and the highway is open once again. Reporting on the city's north side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. And rain has come to an end here in San Antonio. Still watching some heavier storms, though, down to the south and east of town. Those will continue to work towards the Texas coast. And the extended forecast, 88 tomorrow, 86 on Tuesday with a 70% chance of storms. We'll see more chances throughout the week and into next weekend, guys. All right. Justin Horn, thank you so much for joining us Glad today. Glad to be here. Yeah, happy to have you on Sunday. Thanks. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Try to stay dry. Have a good Sunday.